Do you get annoyed when you're playing as a Roman faction in Rome Talk to War, and you've got, like, let's say you're using the Hastati, and you want them to attack the unit, just charge in, pull out the swords, and attack. But no, they charge in, they stop, they pull out the peeler, they aim, they throw it, and then they charge in. Do you find that annoying? Well, there's actually a fix for it. Do you also find it annoying if you've got missile cavalry, and you want to charge them into melee, but they just keep on firing as a missile uh, unit until they run out of ammo, but you can actually set it so that they fight in melee. Here's what you do. You hold down the button control on your keyboard, and then it changes your attack icon away from a missile unit to a melee unit, and then you can attack. So no more the Hastati stopping and then throwing their peeler at the annoying time. All missile troops, you can now tell them to just attack. This works quite well for elephants as well. Hold down control, right click for them to attack, and they're just charging. I've played Rome Talk to War for many years, and there's a lot of stuff that I did not know um, until much later on. And I get those comments a lot as well from you people who have played Talk to War for years, and you say, I never knew this about certain things I do in the game. And I have the exact same experience, you know, with Legend of Talk to War's videos, especially quite a lot with many a true nerd. They just show you so much stuff that you never even knew were in the game, even though you've got thousands of hours into it like me. So, in this video right now, I'm just going to go over five things. That was one of them. we got four more to go, all just as interesting. And this is just for Rome Talk to War. I've got another one planned for Barbarian Invasion, one for Medieval 2, just lots of other different stuff. So, if you are interested, subscribe for more, and let's begin. Characters in the campaign have retinue and traits. Did you know that you can actually move the retinue from one character onto another? Now, if you saw my last Let's Play episode, or maybe the one before it, I did this quite a lot, and I actually got a lot of comments from people telling me that they never knew this was a thing. And this was actually what inspired this video. Um, so, for example, let's say you've got one general who's got quite a lot of governor traits, and let's say his retinue has got a few of them, they're a bit mixed up there. Uh, like, loads of different stuff. And you've got another one with a lot of uh, command traits, a good general. Uh, you can put these two in the same army, and you can take all the command retinue from the guy who's that managing settlements, and give it to the commander, and look into the commander, he'll have loads of retinue that help him uh, become a manager, which he doesn't need because he's going to be out on the field. I mean, you can give those over to the person who's going to be managing your settlements, uh, to get a public order boost, or a money boost, population, whatever, it, whatever boost you want. And yeah, you can like maximise your general strengths and focus them down like that. I found this super interesting and yeah, it's quite good. Another interesting thing is that these retinue, they live forever. So let's say you've got a faction leader, and I did this in my last Let's Play. He had like eight decent retinue in his army, but it was like 60 years old and probably about to die. So what I did was I just gave all the three retinue over into the faction heir and some other generals. Stuff like public order boost, uh, population growth, uh, one extra command, stuff like that. I just gave it over to uh, the other generals who I didn't survive, and the retinue will live on through them. Number three, pikes are longer than hoplites. So if you play Macedon, you get the pikemen, but if you play the Greeks, you get the hoplite units. Well, there's actually a difference in length, and a lot of people try to tell me this was not true for some reason. Uh, telling me that it's fake, but if you actually look at it, you can quite clearly see, and it is actually a confirmed uh, thing online, but a lot of people, but I'm, I'm guessing they just did not believe it, uh, which I found super weird, and that just shows how much, uh, I guess, this video is needed. Pikes are longer. Now, this works particularly well if you're playing as Macedon, you've got pikemen, you're fighting the Greeks, and they've got hoplites, but low morale. Because that means your pikemen, because that your spears are longer, you're going to be stabbing them first. Meaning that they're going to break as soon as you start stabbing them because they're getting attacked and they're not attacking you back. So that's going to be a big morale hit for them. And it same works the other way. If you're playing as the Greeks and you're fighting Macedon and you've lost a general so you've got low morale, then you've got to be very careful. Because they're going to start stabbing you before you can stab them. And that's going to affect your morale by quite a bit. 
Now this one's a super obvious one, but I'm gonna put it in here because it's surprising how many years it took me to figure this out. You can actually retrain your troops. And I know that's like a super obvious one that most of you are going, yeah, we know that, we knew that from the start. But that took me years to figure out. Let's say you've got a unit of Hastati, usually 80 troops in the formation. It's been knocked down to about 65. If you pull it back into a settlement where you can uh, train Hastati, you can retrain it and you can get up back up to a full 80 squad unit. That took me years to figure out. I always saw the retrain thing, but I only thought it was for armor upgrades. Because you can retrain them, get them armor upgrades and stuff like that, but I didn't know you could actually replenish them. So yeah, just I just found that interesting. And there might be well, there's definitely gonna be one person watching this video who did not know that. There's definitely gonna be one. Or one person who was confused that why sometimes it only gives armor upgrades and sometimes you can replenish. It's because you can't train that unit up in that settlement, so you can't replenish your troops there. And last but not least, because this is one of the most asked questions um, in the comment section from my Let's Plays about um, how I do certain stuff, and that's how, how do you get your units to glow? Like, how do you see your past commands? Let's say you tell her to start to line up on the hill, and you want to get the archers behind him, but he's actually got to walk up the hill first, so you don't really know the exact position to put, place your archers, where they're done safely behind the Hastati unit, or whatever unit I said earlier. Then all you have to do is hold down spacebar, and it should light up the map, and it's a yellow like dotted line for every unit that you've already given a command to. Just a yellow line, you can see where, where your past plans were, and yeah, you can help sort out your troop formations from there. Again, this was something that took me a few years to figure out. I only figured it out whilst playing, I think it was a Tiller to War, and I played that for a couple of years, and then I thought, what if it works on Rome as well? I went back to Rome to War, tried it, and it did actually work, which uh, really surprised me. I can't believe I just didn't even think about pressing the space bar. And I get a lot of comments from people asking me how I do that, so I thought I might as well put it in at the end of a video, as I do get asked that one quite a lot, so yeah, just press spacebar. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, um, attacking with missile units in melee, uh, retinue, pikes being longer, you can retrain and replenish troops, and the spacebar mechanic to see past actions. Hope you've enjoyed, subscribe for more, next week I might do Medieval 2 Talk to War, and then week after that Barbarian Invasion. And I can also go into the newer titles with some of these as well. Um, I know quite a lot of stuff from Attila Talk to War and Napoleon Talk to War, as I've got many hours in those and I've figured out a lot of weird stuff in them. But hope you've enjoyed, hope to see you in the next one, and goodbye. <laughs>